everyone. So we've just finished the Easter bank holiday weekend and to be honest I did start vlogging and we had some great sunshine on the first day but then it started pouring it down and it just, oh, I just did not want to vlog and if my heart's not in it then what's the point? But I thought you know what I'm going to take something from this and I thought I'd just do a top 10 hiking um, to, on a coastal walk, it's like a survival guide tip video and uh, yeah that's what I'm doing. Hopefully it's going to be really useful for you. I do generally, well me and my fiance do generally prefer going to the beach and we'll go in a camper van and we'll just do like a circular walk and uh, yeah there's nothing that beats it because the scenery is always fantastic. The sea just can't beat it. So let's get started. So number one is really important and that is layering up. Now it could be absolutely scorching hot outside but there'll be so many overgrown tracks full of nettles so you'll need to cover your legs trust me. There's so many times that dirt tracks haven't been chopped or anything. Oh it's so frightening and I hate getting stung. And you'll usually feel the cold in the morning and the early evening. So just light layers that can just peel off when the sun reaches its peak, throw in your backpack and then just pop them on later on. The thinner the better and if it's polyester then great because you can just keep regulating your temperature. I don't generally go for cottons because they're just too breathable. And I'm usually in my ski trousers as well most of the time because I get really really cold and there's nothing worse than just feeling really uncomfortable while you're on a massive trek. Number two is get some decent walking boots. Now this is such a must because you'll need to rely on a really good grip. I shouldn't probably be touching that but there's so many slippy muddy surfaces out there and the problem is you don't know what you're going to come across if you're trying a new walk and even by the sea you'll still come across really slippy surfaces particularly when seaweed is involved and because I've got really small feet I've got about size four I can usually find kids versions much much cheaper so I usually go to Sports Direct I've bought them in Trespass before um, you can normally get them for about 20-30 quid and try and get a really good ankle support and waterproof it's so important. Number three is take plenty of water. Now let's say you were doing the Three Peaks Challenge of Yorkshire which we did last August I think and there isn't a shop for miles and miles and just by pure look we found this sort of roadside burger van but it had water and loads of other things and personally I would take probably about two big bottles on a 10 mile walk and we really love this Avex one because it can clip to your bag there's a little lock at the side and it just means it's not going to leak all over your bag and you can just pop it at the side of your rucksack it's brilliant. Number four is always take a map now usually most phones now have Google Maps which is fantastic but I do prefer to screenshot my maps because you can't always guarantee in the most sexiest secluded areas that you're going to find signal. Now that is just a nightmare but usually you can actually find yourself on the GPS location and get an idea. But if you're doing a really complex walk, let's say back to the Three Peaks Challenge again where there's so many routes you could take, I really would download some ordnance survey maps and you can get the app for free and actually pay for the maps and download them that way. Number five and that is something I can't live without and I don't know how I did before and that is to take emergency phone chargers. Now I really am not talking about ones like this although I got this free from Screwfix. Um, these to be honest I think are absolutely useless and I've never had a full charge from them but one I can highly recommend is a big anchor charger and it will charge our laptops although we don't take that hiking. Uh, our phones, I'm always taking videos, photos of all the scenery while I'm out so I can't stop myself and don't forget if you are using your phone as a sat nav that battery will just shoot right down. You really need it as an emergency. And number six is just as important as a rest and that is take plenty of food and snacks. Now obviously take your regular packed lunch but I really would take high energy snacks. And ones that we usually take in our rucksack and you can tell it's been in there a while are like Kendall cakes, high sugar ones. It just feels safer knowing that they're in your bag. But normally we will take absolutely loads of chocolates or uh, flapjacks and things. So last weekend obviously because it was Easter we just filled up our rucksacks with Easter eggs. And normally we wouldn't eat those snacks just every day but they certainly have a place because you'll be burning calories like there's no tomorrow. Which is fantastic because it's a great excuse. Number seven is totally from experience and that is take cash with you because not everybody takes cards and we've almost been caught out a few times and it's really embarrassing and we've ordered a cream tea in the past 
and we've been scrambling for change and thought, oh crap, maybe we're gonna have to just be in the back cleaning the pots for them, just like in a cartoon. But uh, yeah, we've managed to scrape out of that a few times, but yeah, definitely take some cash. Number eight, which I really didn't want to have to mention, but it goes without saying, and that is take some baby wipes or maybe some toilet paper and take your rubbish with you because there's not gonna be toilets for miles. You're out in nature. So you might have to spend a penny just round the corner, hiding behind a bush. And uh, yeah, it, that's all I need to say. Number nine is something that I really should take note of and that is don't rely on other people to pack your essentials. The amount of times I've been really naughty and just assumed that my fiance has taken some painkillers or my Fitbit charger or just general bits and bobs and he's really on the ball with it. And I'm one of these people that needs a checklist to check everything off just in case I've missed something. Number 10 is another one from experience and that is plan your journey. I hate planning journeys because I'm totally rubbish with maps. But one thing I mean by this is set off early and start your return journey early, especially if you're doing a circular walk. We never do wet rambling and sleep at different locations. We always return to base. But on the odd occasion, from experience, we have ended up getting caught walking back in the dark, using torches on our apps, on our phones. And there's nothing worse than being ankle deep in mud. And it was my birthday, it was awful. And I was moaning like a bitch. Just don't do it to yourself, it's really not worth it. Just set off early. So I hope those tips were really useful. And if you think there's something that I've missed that you think others should know about, then please comment below. Maybe you could teach me a few things. I know it's a bit of a tricky one where you want to try and look your best while you're out sightseeing but you really, really, you just can't do it all the time. Especially when you've got rain and wind just pouring at you and you really have to go for practicality. But I can guarantee, I'm sure you'll find some really Instagrammable pictures when you get there and some peace and quiet. And hopefully next week I'll have a recipe video for you. I'm not gonna give too much away, but I'm very excited and yeah, that's it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. But the whole of this list will be in my blog post below if you get stuck. Thanks for watching, bye.